G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is how to work out the amount of combinations possible when we select the number of objects from a larger group. This is part of a series of videos where we've been looking at combinations and permutations. So, the first thing I want to address is how combinations differ from permutations, which is this. With combinations, order doesn't matter. Let's give an example of this. So say I was, had five books, five different books, and I'll write that down, and I was going to select three of them. Now, I was going to select these three books and I'm going to take them on holiday. I'll show you the books here. I've got a greeny sort of colour book, I've got a dark green sort of book, I've got a black book, I've got a blue book, and I have a red book. And from these five books, I'm going to select three of them to take away, but it doesn't matter what order I grab them. I'm just going to chuck them in a the suitcase. And with combinations, order doesn't matter. So how do I go about working how many different ways I could do this? Well, the first thing I do is I'll show you the spaces for three books. One, two, three. And what you might realise is when I select my first book, I've got five different... This is the first one to go here. I've got five books to choose from. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to put that number in there. So I select the first book. Say it's a red one there. And it leaves me with now four books to choose from for this second space. So I check maybe this book. And then it leaves me with three different books for the third space. So... All I need to do now to work out the number of different ways that I can get these books, or different, this is going to be for permutations, and I'll show you how to extend this for combinations, is we just multiply these through, 5 times 4 times 3, which is equal to 60. There's 60 different ways this can be done. What this is showing us at the moment, it's saying that pretty much that red, and if I had chosen a blue and this green here, that it would be considered different to green, blue, and red. But you're going to see that this is just the same books but swapped around in order. So permutations would include this sort of thing and combinations would say, well, hang on, now these are the same, they're just in a different order. So if this is permutations, our answer here, where we've got 60. So we just need to do one extra step in order to work out how many combinations of things we can choose. And it's fairly logical when you think about it because if we look at our three spaces here, you might say, well, how many different ways can these be ordered? How many different ways can three spaces be ordered? And so you might remember from a few other videos, we have three spaces here to choose from, two here and one. This have this many different ways that three different objects can be ordered. Okay, the three different spaces. So this is written quite often as three factorial. Three times two times one, which is six different ways. And we divide this through. And this will tell us the number of combinations as opposed to the number of permutations. 60 divided by 6 equals 10. I'm going to show you this now using the rule that they actually write down. But I'll tell you the truth, I actually don't use the rule very much, the uh, combinations rule, but it's a handy one to wear out to work through just in order to get a bit of understanding. But that's the way we work out combinations. So first off, this is the rule, and I'm going to sort of show it as we go with, with our example. So say we were looking at combinations, and from five things we were going to select three of them. The way they write this is as follows. They write combinations, and from n objects, we're selecting r different white things, okay? And this equals, and this one equals, well, what we did is we selected three things, okay? But I'm going to write this down a little bit weirdly. This is five times four times 3, times 2, times 1, because I'm dealing with the numbers we have here to help us work out our rule. But what we actually were only left with was the first 3 here. Okay, you're going to notice we didn't take the N2. In fact, what we didn't take was this 2 times 1 part, this part. Okay, I just got a little line through them just to show that we didn't take them. And on a rule, this could be written as N factorial, a factorial, the number times, you know, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 3 factorial will be 3 times 2 times 1. So this is n factorial over, and this is n take away r factorial. So n take away r is 2 factorial, okay? But then we just have one little extra thing we then divide it by. And you'll remember that we had the number of spaces, this number here, the r. Okay, this was 3 times 2 times 1 which is r factorial. Okay, and that was what we divided by. So you might then look at this and say, okay, this was 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial, n take away r factorial, 
divided by 3 factorial. Okay, also divided by 3 factorial. And that's the rule we use, but I don't particularly use it a little bit like that. I tend to draw it out like I did when I uh, was working it out before. So we'll go through a couple of other examples. For instance, we had a committee of four people. Okay, we had four people that we were going to select from a bigger committee of 10. So four people selected from 10. And how many different ways could we do this? And this is where we don't particularly care about order, so this is going to be how many different combinations there are possible. So, you might, just to get used to this, you might write down combinations, and you might say 10 and 4. From 10 people, they're going to select 4 positions, and this equals, and so we're going to have those 4 positions, those 1, 2, 3, 4 positions. Okay, so the first one is 10 to choose from, 10 people, and then that, that position's taken, so we only have 9 people to choose from there. Now, we've got two positions taken, so it only leaves us with eight people to put in that position. And then there's three people here, so this only leaves seven people. And then we're going to end up multiplying these. Okay, this is that n factorial over n take away r factorial part of it. But then we're going to divide this by, you remember, the number of different spaces here factorialized. So over four times three times two times one. And I'm just going to now fill that in, and we're going to get what our answer is. You can do this using a rule if you want, but I just do it this way. So I can cancel out, because 8 is the same as 4 times 2. And then I can also say, OK, well, this is 3, and I'm going to divide this by 3 and get 3. So 10 times 3 is 30, times 7 is 210 over 1. So our answer is there's 210 different ways of doing this. What about one last one of these? Now the question I have for this one is, how many different ways could we select from 8 people? So from 8 people, we're going to select 5 kids to play basketball. Okay, so how many different ways could we do this? So you might give this a go. Alright, now how would I do this? First off, I'm going to have 5 different spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is going to be filled from these 8 people, this 8 by 7, by 6, by 5, by 4. Okay, and I could, it's the same sort of explanation we're using now. We had 5 different spots, so this is going to be over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we can now start cancelling out. We have a 5 here and a 5 here. I can put little multiplications here actually. <laughs> Alright, uh, we have a 4 here and a 4 here. 2 times 3 is the same as 6. This leaves us with a 1 down the bottom, which is not going to really uh, mean that much. And so 7 times 8 equals 56. And that's the way you work out combinations. It's pretty cruisy, right? It's pretty easy. Um, anyway, hopefully you get this idea. In fact, if I was going to write this just before I go, if you're going to write this factorial and using the rule, I'll just quickly do that for you. Um, what about I jot that down? What would you call that, do you think? We'd call this... 8 factorial over n minus r, which is, um, you know, that 8 take away 5, which is 3 factorial over 5 factorial. Alright, it's pretty simple, right? Anyway, hopefully that video is of great help to you, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.